some stuff that's come out of my new research on uh, on Red River. Uh, I had I had anticipated seeing something very similar to like Chesapeake or New England, where colonists introduce cattle, uh, horses, and pigs, and they just flourish out of control. Uh, but this doesn't happen in in Red River, in part because of climatic limitations on the ability for free range livestock husbandry. Cattle that go astray tend to not come back tend to kind of disappear and die. Either they're preyed upon by predators or they freeze to death over the winters. And so the colonists at Red River had an incredibly difficult time establishing a cattle population. The colony first established in 1812, or the first colonists arrived in 1812. There's a war between the Northwest Company and the Hudson's Bay Company that obviously makes it a little bit difficult to establish an agricultural colony, but they don't have a reproducing herd of cattle until the 1830s. Um, there's several attempts to bring cattle up from Missouri that fail because they freeze on the way up. Uh, and the sustaining population, even by the 1840s, is so small and minuscule, it's not until the railway is completed later in the 19th century that you start to see the kind of cattle explosion of, across the prairies. It's really interesting. I thought, I thought I'd find the opposite. Thinking about the transfer of biota from Europe to North America helps tie together different regions of Canada because it's an experience that's common across the uh, areas of Canada that Europeans and their descendants settled. So whether we're talking about Acadia or we're talking about the St. Lawrence Valley or we're talking about the Northwest Coast and Vancouver Island, similar processes occurred at different times. So if we're looking at the St. Lawrence Valley, we're talking about the 17th century. If we're looking at Vancouver Island, we're talking mainly about the 19th century. But that process of introducing novel plants and animals and diseases occurred in very similar fashions. And so I think it ties the experiences of colonialism across Canada in ways that we could think about the experience of the Nuchalnut in Vancouver Island um, being common to some extent to the experience of the Wendat in southern Ontario.